Hey there, Lickin' Riffers. Welcome back to yet another awesome finger style lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which we're gonna explore a noodling idea based around one finger, one position, the ninth fret, okay? It's in the key of A, and that means that you can use, okay, all three bass strings, A, D, and E, okay, for your noodling purposes, okay? This is a great exercise both for finger style technique and for your creativity, your noodling, your improvisation prowess. So I'm gonna break it down for you, but first let me show you the sound that we're going for. Okay, you can do many, many things here. The sound is something like this. Right? And you can start adding rhythm as well once you get comfortable. And so forth. Okay, you can also go high, okay, and you can use higher notes as well. But the basic, basic idea is uh, put your finger on nine, okay, your forefinger on nine on strings one to four, okay. So you have the nine, the ninth fret, okay, and you have the fifth string open, the A string open. So if you play strings two, three, four, and five, it should sound like this. Okay? Now, if you add 10 on the second string and 11 on the fourth, then you get an A chord because 12 on the fifth string is A, okay? So this creates the C shape, okay? The C shape chord. So this is why this works so well. So you can basically just put the chord on and off, okay? And this is a really good start. can do in C you can do here so you can add 12 on the second string if you like okay and you can add 11 on the third string as well okay okay because this creates the a minor shape which turns it technically into C6 Okay, but forget about chords. We want to solo here. I just wanted to show you why this works theoretically. Okay, so now let's try soloing a little bit. Okay, no rhythm whatsoever. Okay, just play strings two to five and just one string at a time. Okay, we have 12, 10, and nine on the second string. Okay. No embellishment whatsoever, just pick them. Okay, just listen to how it sounds. Okay, get used to the sound. On strings three and four, you have 11 and nine. Okay, so just, okay, just get used to them, right? Then try all three. Just try creating little melodies. Okay? And I'm playing the A bass string, the fifth string, all the time, just to give it a little bit of harmony. Okay? You can let go of the bar, of course, but the bar just keeps you in place because that gives you a chord to work with. So when you're ready, start adding rhythm to it. Okay, again, one string at a time. Okay, just play around with it until you feel comfortable with it. And then, you can start adding the D string into it. So start with A, do the same thing you just did, okay? Just noodle around. And then play the D string as your bass note. And then you can go back to A, okay? So noodle around with D and A as your bass notes, okay? Again, I'm just 
walking you through this, okay? This might take you a while, but I'm showing you the process, okay? Once you get used to the, to the scale, okay? Everything becomes a lot easier, okay? You can keep the bar again, okay? For the general harmony. This enables you to create interesting, um, they're called double stops, okay? Those, okay, those harmonized notes, two strings together at a time, okay? So try as many combinations as possible, and once you add rhythm to it, it's instantly music, okay? You don't even have to think about it, just walk through the scale. with D. And then I'm back to A. Again, I'm only playing the bar. You see, I'm not doing anything overly complicated or very technically demanding. I'm just changing the bass note. When you're ready, Play the bass, the, the bass string, the E bass string. And then you have a, just the chord, you have a, a, an E chord. Okay, because this is the E chord. Okay, so instantly you have the E chord. And you can go back to D and then to E again. And then D again. back to A. Now if you want to go higher, you have 9 on the first string as well, so you can do D, okay, and then you have A, okay, and when you play 9, 9, and 9 on strings 1, 2, and 3, you have A major 7. And you have 12 on the first string as well. Okay, now, now you have two options. You can play 11 on the first string. And then you have a sort of a mode, which is a special sound, okay? Okay, if you like this sound, great. If you don't like it, play 10 on the first string, okay? So you have 9, 10, and 12, okay? So... talking about? If you like this sound better, play it. You can alternate. You can play 9, 11, and 12, and then 9, 10, and 12, okay? Every round you have A, D, and E, okay, the bass string. You can play something different. You can play something different on the first string, okay? So um, I bet you're wondering what I'm doing on the second and third string, okay, when I'm doing this. Okay? You have many, many combinations. That's because you have many, uh, you have many notes there between strings two and three. So I'm playing nine and nine. I play ten and nine. I play ten and nine, and I hammer on the eleven on the third string. Okay. And I'm adding twelve to that, so I can play ten and nine and add twelve. And I can play 10 and 11 and add 12. Okay, now I can play around all of them, again, randomly. As long as you have a bass note going, anything you play will sound good. You see? Any combination, as long as you have rhythm, as long as you have the bass note going, it's music. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy yourself. string as well. You 
You see, it adds to the complexity of the sound, but you're not actually doing anything. You're just playing an open string. Okay. Everything I just showed you on strings two and three, add the open string to it. You can add harmonics. See? Instant complexity without actually doing anything. Now, before I let you go and practice this, you can take the bar to the second fret and do exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing, okay? Because this is A, okay? So if you play exactly, okay? Okay, exactly the same, uh, the same uh, pattern, okay? Exactly the same shape, okay? The same scale pattern. You get a completely different result. In my opinion, it sounds a bit more generic, okay? It doesn't sound as good as this, but you can use it to break the monotony if you need to. Four, five or two, three, five. You can use the open E string, of course. And the E bass. And then when you're used to this, and when you're done here, you can go back to nine. Right? And just fool around with it, noodle around with it. Check out my Complete Guitar Freedom course series, slickenref.com slash courses, and uh, help me keep Lick and Ref going via Patreon. Anything you choose to give goes right back into Lick and Ref. Thank you very much. I thank you in advance. And I will see you in the next lesson. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye for now. Enjoy.